I'm here with Natalie Haynes, who is the 2011 Voltaire lecturer. It's like there's been some kind of mistake, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, so, Natalie, what are you going to be talking to us about tonight? Well, it's sort of a two-pronged, uh, that's my theory, it's sort of a two-pronged um, lecture. The first point that, um, as a modern society, we understand ourselves better and therefore are happier. Um, if we know where we come in history, that we've kind of got stuck living in the short-termist kind of mindset. So we don't think very much about the past or really very much about the future. And I think it probably doesn't make us particularly happy. And the second prong, therefore, is because I am biased towards ancient history, because that's what I like the most to slash know anything about, um, that if we are going to understand particularly classical Athens and imperial Rome, um, the quickest way into those societies for us to understand them is through their comedy. Mm. A lot of humanists or people who take a non-religious approach to life are quite inspired by the ancient world. They think of it as a time when inquiry was more rational and ethics were more uh, humanist. Do you think that's true or is it just that people think, oh, this is a pre-Christian age? Um, is it actually the case that the ancient world was more humanist? I think some of it is, and some of it really isn't. As with any society, pretty much, there are. It, it's possible that our world can contain both Richard Dawkins and um, yeah, crazy evangelical preachers at the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm. And I don't, although the actual world is smaller in scale, um, I, I think those, those disparities exist there too. So what you have is um, somebody like Protagoras, who is prepared to go on record and say, on the subject of the gods, I am unable to say whether they exist. There are many obstacles to such knowledge, including the obscurity of the subject and the brevity of human life and then we're told that his books are burned for that so you kind of go well here's some rationalist inquiry and here's some hysterical overreaction um, and yet at the same time Cicero could quote that passage some hundred years several hundred years later so obviously if they were burned they weren't all burned um, and so you, so you have maybe this idea of this sort of underclass of people sneakily hiding away rationalist text. It, it's kind of hard to say, but yeah, of course, when you look at people who die in heroic, stoic, suffering but not being religious manner, of course it's very inspirational. And at the same time, the, the Romans were capable of tolerating all kinds of bonkers religious beliefs. I mean, they have a terrible reputation now for persecuting religious sects, and, and it's largely undeserved. They led all kinds of Cybele worship, where uh, worshippers used to randomly castrate themselves in moments of high passion. Uh, they tolerated all kinds of crazy things, so both is the answer. Why is it that the ancient world particularly appeals to you? Um, it caught me young, and I think that's probably the trick. Um, it caught me with children's fiction, uh, The Eagle of the Ninth, uh, now turned into quite the most homoerotic film I think I've ever seen uh, in The Eagle. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, then I started Latin when I was 11, I guess, and I had a very good teacher, and I was such a Greek when I was... I don't know, 14, something like that. And as time went on, they became the things I could never bear to give up, as I could watch my science GCSEs disappear and not become A-levels, and history and geography and all those things. I, I could never bear to give up Latin or Greek, and so that's how it ended up happening, I guess. Do you think there's enough awareness of the ancient world and its culture and its history today? No, I do not. I certainly don't. Um, it's fallen off the curriculum, of course, because the national curriculum is packed to the gunnels with so much other stuff. So I understand how that happens, but I'm sorry for it. Um, I think having a, a working knowledge of an entire society is something that you don't get in any other subject. When I was teaching Latin a very long time ago, um, my then boss used to occasionally proclaim that the House of Western Thought had many rooms but only one basement. Um, <laughs> and you kind of, it's on those things where you go, oh yeah, that's, I kind of, that's exactly what I want to, I, I want to know about a whole society and that's what you get when you do classics, of course. You could do philosophy and religion and the law and culture and women and everything all crammed into one thing. It's, it's quite hard to find that, I think, in another subject.